to some people, Solio Moors is just a football club, but to Solio and those people that work here, it's more than that. It's a story of hard work and determination paying off. Yeah, we merged with uh, with uh, Moor Green Football Club, and uh, it eventually we we changed the name to something that involved both Solihull and Moor Green, and uh, that took. That didn't take too long to fix up. The FA were happy to, for us to do this because they, they realised we were going to lose a club somewhere, somewhere or the other. And it was important that we kept the name of Solly Hall because uh, everybody knows Solly Hall. Everybody knows the NACs here and uh, the, the dog shows here. And everything else is within two or three miles of this football ground. After a great start in their first season in the National League, Solio Moore's manager, Marcus Bignett, was headhunted by managerless Grimsby Town. With a lengthy amount of fixtures left to play, the Moors chose former Hensford manager Liam McDonald to lead the club forward. You know, the, main, the main target was to, to keep the club up. Um, you know, I, I left a club that was, was fighting to win the league uh, and uh, I knew what the remit was at Solio. I knew what uh, finances I'd have because I knew the ground had to be done, but I was confident in the players that would come in. Uh, the local lads would, and they step up for them. They uh, flourish, and, and they have done. Um, you know, they've done really well. So I'm delighted. They're delighted, and, and I'm sure the football club's delighted. It came to my attention that this club wasn't just a club; it was a family, whom over the years have worked extremely hard to secure a safe and successful future. I was with the old club when they were down in Whitney Lane. As, um, it's 42 years, 1976, 78, when I joined. Yes. And I've been with them ever since. I, I joined as um, sort of secretary and became the company secretary when we had to deal with all the um, information, you know, for selling the ground, etc. Have you enjoyed your, your spell here over the years? <laughs> yeah, yes. It's been fun, you know, you meet a lot of people, a lot of friends, you make a lot of friends as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a great family club and I was a bit concerned when we moved up at Lee because I thought we might lose that, but we haven't. I mean, there's still lots of kids and mums and dads come and it's a safe environment, for, you know, to come and watch a game. It's, there's never any problems. But I say, it used to be Solihull Moors, uh, Solihull Borough and... Uh, more Green Football Club, and uh, that's how it was for quite a while. But More Green Football Club, they, they sustained a couple of fires which really ruined their their facility. So they joined in with us, and uh, we merged together for a couple of years, and then we we upgraded everything, changed the name, and uh, we are we are now. This ground here, the stand in the background there. That used to be a golf driving range. Um, this used to be a nightclub where we're standing now. And uh, upstairs there were lots of parties and uh, meetings and things like that, which are quite useful income streams for us. After filming for Solly Moors for an entire season, I started to notice a healthy relationship between the management, the players, and most importantly, the fans. I think it's a lot of hard work, you know, mainly by the board and people behind the scenes, as well as the team. You know, we created the ground, I don't know if you remember, it was a, this was a golf driving range. You know, created, we found over 10,000 golf balls on the pitch, which is now the pitch. Um, so we, we've gone from basically nothing to what we've got now, which I think is a great achievement. So obviously our aim at the start of the season was just to stay in the league. Obviously. Being the size of our club in this sort of league, budget-wise, we're, you know, we've competing with a lot like, big clubs really. So I'd say we're overachieving in theory, but with the squad we've got, I don't think we're overachieving because I believe we can beat anyone on the day. I think today, you know, even with ten men against, you think of the size of the club Wrexham. I think, you know, we're looking up to come away with at least a point today, even three points maybe. So no, I, I, I think we are overachieving really, if I'm to be honest. I've been supporting them for about five years and they've always been in the league below in the North, Conference North. And to be in this league is amazing anyway, so to have two seasons in it, 
uh, we just mean there's more exposure for the club and we get to play ex a lot of ex-football league teams in massive stadiums. It's been a good season. Uh, at the start we was tipped to go down, not to really stay in. And then we had a good spell where we looked like we was going to be massively safe and then we took a bit of a dip but we managed to get through it so it's been a good season. Like, the expectation was to stay up and that's what we've done. So. Obviously I know I'm only a lone player but I wanted to stay up as much as, um, as, much as everyone else. Um, yeah, it was a big result, Macclesfield. Um, we really needed that off the, off the back of um, a lot of negative results but I think today we're all feeling really confident. And um, yeah, really, really pleased we didn't have to wait till the, uh, till the final day to do it. As we come to the end of the documentary, it doesn't mean an end for the club. This is only the beginning. There's always more to come. Now you all know my wee brother and his name is Jock McGraw and he's lately joined the football club but he's not a boot football and he's had three black eyes already and team the phrase got since our Jock became a member of that terrible football club and no he's football crazy. Yeah, man.